Good morning and uh, welcome. Um, I hope you're doing wonderfully wherever you are in this world on this um, Tuesday the 20th of September 2022. It's a lovely day. Um, welcome to your Yoga Solutions podcast. Uh, I am Mark J. Aquaviva and I'm here to share my insights, my yoga insights. And um, I have a different take on things, so I'd like to share it with the world. So, because um, stuff I come up with seems to, seems to help. It certainly helps me and um, it helps people get unstuck. Because um, um, ge generally speaking, uh, the, the, the issues that we have with our bodies is our relationship to our bodies. And when we are practicing our yoga, we're engaging with that exact relationship. You know? And so it, it's hard to find solutions because the way we do things, especially the way we do things to our bodies, is going to be in line with how we always do things. And um, it's going to be the way we ha how we always do things that causes the issues. So it's a catch-22 situation. And um, <clears throat> the way, what, what I found the solutions lay in uh, where you can actually find real life solutions that change your experience of yourself is in changing the way you relate to the world. And that sounds kind of vague and um, kind of theoretical, but it but it's not. It's practical. You can it becomes practical when you practice yoga with that kind of intention. And by changing the relationship to the world, what I mean is practical stuff like changing the way you relate to the support that is offered beneath you, the ground, and uh, your relationship to gravity. And more importantly, in some ways, because it's kind of about you, how you relate to space, the world itself around you, and the space above you. All, all, of, those, all of those things will dictate your experience. Um, and I won't go into a deep explanation of why, but just give it some thought. And, you know, what, what does relating mean? How do you relate to space? What does that mean? Well, you know, if you're excited and, and you're very happy to see someone, for example, you're relating to the world in front of you in, a, in an open kind of way, celebratory kind of way, and your body will respond and your breath will respond. Um, if you are feeling tired and a bit grumpy and, and a bit contracted, it'll be because th those things are going on and you will contract. You will contract from the world in front of you and the result will be that you feel heavy physically and it will go with how you feel emotionally. See what I mean? So, uh, as much as we, as much as it's interesting to kind of understand the workings of the body, and but the the very fact of kind of separating yourself from your body by doing stuff to it, which is how most of us practice yoga, um, that will cause the separation that we're trying to redress. The, the answer is in unification. The answer is in yoga. <laughs> you know, when you and your body are at one then you won't experience the diff any you won't experience resistance from your body you won't experience a fight with it and the way you and your body become one is when you and the world when you relate to the world all around you in a way that supports you um, simple as that um <clears throat> yeah so uh, I'm, I'm just getting a little clearer uh, in my idea of what is actually needed for any solution for any problem. Yeah, it might seem remote and unconnected to that, to your shoulder problems, to your hip problems, to your knee complications. Yeah? It might seem unrelated to those things, but it's not. And um, what I thought I'd offer today is uh, a very simple shift in perspective of your relationship to weight um, through the body. Um, most of us suffer from hips, shoulders, lower back, neck, that sort of thing, those problems, because of carrying our weight. We, we lift our weight and carry it and hold it in place in space. And the result of that is uh, the structures kind of 
aren't performing in unison with us <laughs> you know we, we are if you're carrying your shoulders then your shoulders become the thing you have to carry whereas if your shoulders are part of you then there's no question there's no, nothing to think about nothing to work out um there's an example but um yeah i thought i'd deal with carrying weight um and there's a thing that i and, and quite a few yoga teachers have tapped into this they, they talk about spirals and that sort of thing but um there's a more straightforward way of understanding this uh, spirals is when you're kind of looking at what the muscles and tissues and, and tissue is doing when you when you're working in a spiral kind of fashion um but in terms of how to not have to carry your weight which is the goal Ideally, we want to give our weight to where we touch the ground. That's the best place for it, okay? Uh, and um, the reason I wanted to do that is to help you understand how to let go of neck problems, lower back problems, most likely shoulder issues and hip issues, okay? Well, those are the most common things that um, are ubiquitously experienced by people. So, uh, yes. Okay, so the answer, here is the answer. Uh, I've been accused of taking a long time to get there, but uh, I need to give a foundation to the practice so that you can engage appropriately, not from your head, but from your body. Um, and if you, if you get the idea, then you're more likely to get the benefit. So, for example, most people, when you talk about where a feeling weight, if I said, give your weight to, just, just in sitting, and you can be sitting on a chair to do this, you don't have to be doing yoga, you know. Um, when we're talking about giving weight, if I said give your weight to your right hand side, you would take your body weight and put it on the right hand side, and then you'd feel it on the ground on the right hand side. The result of doing that is your body has to carry your weight. <laughs> your spine will have to carry your weight. You'll be holding your head, you know, and and even as you relax. Um, yes, it, it's a relaxing thing to do, but it's kind of not supportive. The, the outcome of continuing to relax will be to get closer and closer to the ground. So it doesn't go with uprightness. Um, if I said relax your weight in sitting, you'd, you'd rest your weight forwards as you hung back. So you'd end up carrying your weight with your spine. It would be relaxing in that you don't have to hold your weight up anymore. If I said take it to the left, right? So this is how most people um, move. They, they, they move, they lift their weight to put it down somewhere. Here's another way. Here's another way that invites you relating from space to the ground. And it's something that um, I teach and uh, I talk about crisscross uh, opposites, where your left side is given to the right and the right side is given to the left. If, as you take your weight over to the right-hand side, you are interested, you take your attention and your breath into the space on the right-hand side, the breath will come up to kind of support you along that side. And yes, your weight is on the, on the right-hand side, but you'll have a different experience. And what will happen, what, what's going on, is instead of dropping your upper body weight over the right, you're taking your weight over to the right in order to be in space on the right. So there's instantly you've got a relationship between earth and space rather than just a relationship to your weight. Do you see what I mean? And it's you relating to the space whilst giving your weight that gives you the experience of lightness in space on the right hand side. Now what's actually going on in terms of where you're, how you're giving your weight is your left hand side, even if this sit bones off the ground, your left hand side is giving its weight through the breath, through the rib cage, um, to the right. So, you know, this left shoulder is relaxed down and where its weight is being transmitted is to my right side. This, these ribs are side bending, but I'm not pulling myself over to the left with my left ribs. What's happening is they were responding to my intention to be in space by finding the ground. My left ribs are finding the ground on the right hand side. 
And all of this, because it's about letting go of my weight, I can let go of my weight in order to breathe. So I don't have to lift with my spine in order to breathe. Instead, I'm giving my weight down to breathe. So I feel like I'm letting go. And when I release the breath, because I'm giving my weight down to the right side from the left, the breathing gear, the rib cage, the space between my head and shoulders, you know, as the top of the lungs here, can find the ground on the right and let go. And yes, uh, the, these ribs are still working, the, um, but I'm not having to do that. There'll also be some responsiveness from the core because uh, a grounded breath involves the core as opposed to involved, um, as opposed to you lifting yourself away from the ground with your spine in order to breathe. Let's try on the on taking your weight to the other side. So you're deciding to, to bring your weight to the left in order to be in space on the left. And what I mean by be in space, your attention, your breath, your senses, your yeah, you. <laughs> you are relating to the left space on the left-hand side through the breath. The outcome of that is the breath will come in to support you on that side. But the reason is because the right-hand side, the right ribs, the space between the head and the right shoulder, and if you want your shoulders to not be heavy on you, will find the ground on the left. So that as you release the breath through the right hand side between head and shoulders from the rib cage from the belly you can drop it through the left uh, through the left and the result is you're con you continue to be supporting the space so in other words you let go you let go and you breathe and you let go and you release the breath both the arrival and release of the breath is a let go and the outcome is you are supported in space give your weight down. You're giving your weight through your body as opposed to hanging your weight off your spine. Most people think of weight as being something they have to carry but if you give it crisscross through your body through and the breathing is the mechanism that allows you to do this and your intention, your attention. If you give your weight through the body in a crisscross style you can experience not having to carry your weight. The, the reason is because you will be resting through your spine as opposed to lifting your weight with your spine. Your core and your ribs, your breathing gear, will be responding to the, the intention to be supported during the arrival and the, the released arrival and release of the breath. So your core and your ribs, which are part of your spine, will become strong. Okay? Um, Okay, so let's make it um, a yoga posture. So if we're intending to twist, for example. So if you do it again, take, take your weight over to the right as you take your attention to space on the right so you can breathe up into space. If you want time to work it out, you hold the breath briefly whilst you balance the space between the head and shoulder on the opposite side through to the ground that you're feeling the weight in. And that's a personal reorganization and your ribs will do that. And then you let go. You let go of the breath. And if you let go of your weight into the ground, it will lead to a potential to release up into space through the top of the head without having to lift. You'll feel work, but it won't be, it'll be natural work. Okay, now you're doing that. You're basically side bending and lurching. The opposite sit bone will be light. If you want to turn this into a twist, you need to do is take your attention also to the space between the head and shoulders on the right hand on the side that you're you're leaning over to and that the weight of that along with the ribs on that side needs to be able to find a way of giving itself to the opposite sit bone which is off the ground at the moment so if you take a breath retain it for a moment whilst you reorganize so that these ribs on the side you're turning to work to move towards the opposite sit bone. It will bring you round into a twist sourced in the, in the ribs and spine. Then you let the breath go. And if the space between the head and shoulder on that side you're turning to finds the opposite sit bone, releases towards it, then what you'll release through is the thoracic spine. 
The difficulty is in, in most people don't, um, most people carry their weight with their upper backs. So this will feel strong. It will feel like you're, um, when, particularly if you can let go of your weight as you breathe. And as you release the breath, the ribs and core will be doing stuff that is related to giving your weight to the ground through the opposite side. So you'll feel these ribs working like crazy. You'll feel your upper spine moving, especially if you can let go of carrying the weight of the head and releasing weight beneath it, between head and shoulder, to the opposite sit bone. And because your attention's with that, you may have got tense on this right-hand side because you, are, you might have forgotten to let go of the weight from the um, left-hand side to the side you're turning to, if you're turning to the right. So if, if you've got a sense of equality, how do we release crisscross? Well, you, um, it's through the breath. What, what you do is you take a breath by letting go of your weight through equally through, through both sides. So if you let go of your weight through the left side, your left side will become light in space. If you let go through your right side, your right side will become light in space as you breathe. When you release the breath, before you release the breath, just pause and hold it and sort of float. So you're holding the breath and relaxing into a balance. Whilst you're relaxing into balance, make sure that you're not holding your weight up with your neck, with your lower back. And check that there's a sense of being able to give the space between the head and shoulders on the right hand side to the left sit bone, left side. And the space between the head and shoulders on the left hand side to the right base. If you can get a sense of that, it's like getting ready to drop. If you get a sense of that, then simply drop. Drop the weight. And if you successfully let go, instead of the usual thing where your insides, your groins and your neck and shoulders and things get tight, instead of that, you'll find something strong happening in the, in the ribcage and spine. You'll be turning from the spine itself as opposed to pulling yourself around with your uh, hips and shoulders. Let's try it one more time on the left hand side. So take your weight over to the left so you can be in space on the left. You can put your hands on your lap and hang back from them. So you can hang out in space on the left, take a breath, retain it whilst you work out how to drop the space between the left side of the head and shoulder to the right sit bone and the ribs on that side underneath that left arm to the opposite sit bone. If you need a couple of breaths, do that. But when you've got that sort of sense, then release the breath and release that opposite sit bone down away from you. And you'll find the ribs on that side working. And if the head has released control, you'll feel some space between your neck and shoulders. The thing that will be working is the ribs, the very top part of the rib cage underneath that shoulder. If you can find an equality of base as you let go of your weight, both sides of you will be supported. Both sides of the neck will be supported. So you continue to relax the weight of the head. If you can release the left side to the right and the right side to the left, as you let go of the breath and your weight, you'll find something moving through the upper spine that can turn you. Okay. So there you go, um, how to let go of your weight by giving it th through your body as opposed to hanging it off your body. And the outcome will be becoming strong in the centre and a development of the ability to let go upwards into space as you release your weight down away from you, from the heart. Okay, so I, I hope that was useful. Uh, feel free to share it around Facebook or I'll, I'll probably put this one on YouTube as well. So um, share it around with people, spread the love for me. Um, and yeah, come and work with me. If, you, if you've got something you want to work out for yourself, um, book a free 15 minute consultation with me. Uh, you can do it, anyone can do that. Okay, you go onto my website. I'll put a, a link below in the comments here. Um, or in the description. You book free 15 minutes and I'll give you an idea to of what you can how you can help yourself. 
Um, I, I do my best to give you what you need for free in the 15 minutes. Um, people, majority, to be fair, majority of people like to carry on working with me in some way, but um, it's not it's not required, it's not a commitment, okay? So feel free to just um, have a chat. And uh, the, the other thing I do is, um, you can always book, go straight for it and book a one-to-one -one with me directly. And uh, well, I'll, give, I'll definitely give you a solution if we put the time to go through that. And, or you can um, uh, attend one of my Saturday morning workshops. Uh, every Saturday, most Saturday mornings, I do a kind of well-being workshop, two and a half hours, uh, cheapest chips. Do it online so you don't have to go anywhere. And uh, if I see you on screen, I can help out. If you want to do view only, it's cheaper. And yeah, I do those most weekends. If you want to become a member of my website, you get access to pretty much every everything I've done over the last several years. So there's hundreds of the, these yoga solutions. There's um, there's probably about a hundred hour, one and a half hour classes as well that I ran last year. And there's um, yeah probably as many workshops. Yeah, it's good. It's coming up to 100, 150 now, something like that. Work two and a half hour workshops on various themes. Um, yeah, if you become um, a member, gold member, um, you get access to all of it uh, <laughs> anytime you like. It's all it's all uh, on demand, so you can just uh, work through things at your leisure. You can do there's a search function on my website, so you can. Look for the thing you're interested in, and uh, yeah, all sorts of options. I won't over, I won't bore you with with too many sales. Oh, if anyone happens to be in Barcelona last weekend of October, or last no second to last weekend of October, um, I'm doing a workshop there. Um, I, I've put something in in my blog that gives you the email of Pete Loggy, who's uh, organising it for me. So if, yeah, if you fancy, if you happen to be in sunny Spain, in Barcelona, and you want to come see me, um, I'll be there doing an in-person workshop. Alrighty, much love, and I shall see you same time, same place next week. All the best now.